many times when I've opened a body bag of a deceased that's decomposed and had the maggots fall on my gown. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of are you dying to know? Because Trisha's dying to know. Okay, so what are we talking about today? We thought we'd go into a bit more detail about decomposition. Ooh. Oh, okay. So, you know, warning. I've got a question for Trace, mm -hmm. and my question today is, sizes, does everybody fit in a coffin? There is a standard size coffin. Uh, in standard size coffins change to slightly bigger than what they used to be because we're all a little bit bigger than we used to be years ago but actually some coffins have to be custom made right and this is either one you're either really really tall you know seven foot and you're either really 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 large and we're talking about people that are probably over two 250 kilos we have to get a specially made coffin which is um, basically big square box. It's what we call the wardrobe. So not everybody fits in the basic standard coffin. So, but a custom one is just as good as the regular one. You get a special one made. Yes. Oh, this is Calvin. He's oh. our mate. He's here to hold my hand. Decom. Let's talk about the gory bit that everybody probably thinks. Ugh. Well, it happens, doesn't it? It's it part happens. of life, and yeah, sometimes. People's loved ones end up in situations like that. So I guess mm -hmm. they need to be treated with respect and care, just like anyone else. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't matter what stage you are in the process of the death stages, you still get taken care of. Decomposition, we basically start to decompose a few minutes after we die. Okay, we go through four stages of um, decomposition. And the first stage is um, the word I keep getting confused about. You can help me with this word. Autolysis. It? It's the autolysis stage, which is very early. Autolysis. Yeah. Just happens minutes after you pass away. You're, um, you're not taking in any oxygen, so the oxygen isn't clearing out any of them toxins in your body, so the bacteria starts to... Straight away. Out. Within about five minutes. Really? Yeah. And the bacteria starts down in, in the lower gut area. And you usually start to decompose around where your appendix will sit normally on your lower um, right hand side. There's often a little green spot happens and that's where it starts to spread and come up and then continue up. So about an hour or so after then you've got your rigor mortis which is next. And the rigor mortis is a chemical reaction. Rigor mortis in the early stage is very, very, very tough. You, you could lift the body up and it'll be solid. And the way we release rigor mortis is just by massaging. The same as, you know, massaging the body, you would just massage the fingers and bend the fingers and the joints. And once you massage all the, the bodies and the joints, the rigor mortis will disappear and it won't come back because it's a chemical reaction. So it's just so it dissipates great... then. Yes. Um, and what about colour at that point? What sort of colour would you expect to see someone say half an hour after death? But say a natural in hospital and you passed away, you tend to not change colour for a while, a few days at least. You know, the colour might have changed slightly after a couple of days down in this bottom part where the bacteria has started. And that's why we need to refrigerate you as soon as possible and that slows the working down of the bacteria, it actually slows it down. Your eyes do um, fog up, it looks like fog, and, and that, that, that will take probably 12 hours or so. Um, and the, it goes like you've got cataracts basically. It looks like a layer of cataracts over the eyes and they actually go blue or they seem to go blue. It seems to be like when we were all born with blue eyes, we seem to go with blue eyes too. And the sinking of the eyes will happen later on in the decomposition. Um, that, that'll take a couple of days. Okay, so that's the first stage. That's what yeah. you expect. And so then what happens? So the next stage um, is we can start to bloat, especially if you haven't been found for a while, you can get a big distended tummy. And this is gas. It's just basically the body, with that bacteria working away, the gases start building up and you won't pop. You know, you hear stories like, oh, if you get bigger and bigger and bigger, they will pop and explode. That doesn't happen at all. No, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't. We That's don't. lucky. Yeah, <laughs> we don't explode. We can get it down by aspirating the gas and the fluids out and, you know, take that down to a normal level again. So the third stage is the active decay. 
And this is a bit where we're getting really, really smelly by now. This is the part where your body is breaking down. You have started to change colour. The green that started there is gone through your body. The green's gone purple to black. On your skin, so imagine On what it's doing skin. inside. So inside, it's it's starting to putrefy. Right. How, so, how long in are we now? Oh, see, you haven't been refrigerated. You know, that could happen within a week. You know, you start oh, it takes to, that long? Yeah. It's circumstances, again, of death. You know, it could be if you're in water, you'll decompose quicker. Or if you, you know, you know, if you're in a hot room, you'll decompose quicker. It depends. So, yeah. but we get to that putrefying stages, and that's where um, skin will start falling off. By this time, you've got maggots. You know, and you've got the flies, and they're eating away at um, the body. Um, just as in nature, when an animal dies outside, yeah. it's just all very natural. And after that, that stage, we then go into the skeletonization stage. Now that decomposition can take years, you know, the bones could last for a long time. But um, they're the four stages of decomposition. Um, and the worst stage is probably the putrefaction because that's when the smell is pretty awful. And there's liquid and there's, um, there's all kinds of nasty colours and smells and, you know, we... Um, when we do get um, people that haven't been found, you know, we take good care of these people. We still look after them. We still make sure that, that um, they're looked after and cared for. At what point can you not no longer dress them and no longer wash them? And well, we can still, even at that stage, we'll still wash, we'll still rinse and try and get the maggots off and get rid of many. We The problem is if there's a hundred maggots outside there'll be thousands inside so it doesn't matter how much we rinse they'll come out from every orifice your eyes your nose your anywhere there's an opening or they'll eat away and break themselves out but we we will still rinse away and clean away and what we'll do is then wrap um, the deceased back in a clean body bag you know so it's nice and fresh even though the you know the body's breaking up we try and hold everything together. We'll wrap everything up. We'll place a chemical in to to uh, get rid of the odor. What this chemical does, it absorbs the odor. So when the service is happening, you know, the family aren't smelling anything bad. You'll not smell anything. And also the wrapping of the bag and the sheet will conceal it, that smell coming out also. And once we've wrapped the body up with the, the sheet and the plastic, we then place the clothes across the top. Do you smell it when you get home? Yes. yes. Like even though you wear all the PPE and the gown over yeah. the top and everything. Yeah, and you know, that's my daily wear every day. I always cover my hair, my face, my eyes, and then my double glove, sometimes triple glove. It's probably not on you, you as you think it is. You just can smell it because that smell stays in your it's nostrils. In your nose. And I think yep. what it is, you just get home and you think, oh, I'm smelling, I'll go home, my husband, I'll go, can you smell anything? Went, oh, you smell of bleach because we bleach, you know, we disinfect the mortuary every day. And he goes, no, you just smell of bleach. So, I, but I feel like I've got to scrub and wash my hair and all of that. But really, I think it's just because You've been around we've it. been around it all day and that smell really does, and it does last a few days. There's an interesting fact that I, I need to tell you about people that are really badly decomposed. And this probably might freak you out, but it actually has been scientifically proven um, that after I've dealt with a person that's really badly decomposed, I'm actually very hungry. Really <laughs> hungry. <laughs> and it's true. I'm really, oh, really hungry. Oh, dear. And you wouldn't think that I'd want to go out and have something to eat when I've just dealt with Why? one. Why? There's some kind of chemical reaction in the brain uh, and I think it stems back to when we were cavemen, when it was, you, you have to eat that fresh meat because you know that once it's gone off, it's bad for you. So you know that that hunger thing comes in, you've got to eat the food. It's something um, to do with that. Oh, it's something, primal, isn't it? Yeah, very it's very primal. primal. So it's, it's deep in everybody's sight. It's deep in every, all of us. But yeah, and people usually go, you feel hungry? That's just crazy. And, and it's true. I do like to have something to eat when I've just dealt with something like that. I well, never cease with this cool. one, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. But, cool. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Hungry, feed the girl. Yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Okay, this is tasteless as all hell, but I need to ask the question. 
Do bits fall off? Um, yeah, well, the skin, the skin. Right, but then an arm won't fall off. It's not like when you see a zombie movie and then, <laughs> you know, his arms fall off. Uh, and... Eventually, when it's to the skeleton stage, that's been like years and years and years. If the if skeleton's never been found, it will eventually, but no. There's a stage called skin slip where the skin starts to peel off. It's a bit, the first stage looks like when you've sunburned and you've got a really bad sunburn and you peel, then it gets deeper into the dermis and it gets very thick and it just starts to, you start to fill with fluid in edema and, and that fluid pops and it pushes the skin up and off and then eventually all the skin comes away and it'll be very um, wet and slippy you know it gets to that stage then eventually that stage all of that skin's come away completely and we start to go into Does the Does it leg leave muscle? It, it will a bit yeah eventually expose muscle and it will start to then go into the leathery stage where we start to dry out after the wet stage we'll dry out and we'll start to go you know like i suppose mummified, mummified yeah. when you see the um the old egyptian ones who were embalmed and are mummified to that leathery stage but this can occur naturally as yeah. well if you're in a peat bog you peat know, bog. A peat bog. <laughs> Don't die in a peat bog, people. Yeah, you can be preserved and mummified. You really? Know, there's histories of bodies in peat bogs and they're being well preserved and gone mummified. Obviously, you know, you go to Everest and there's bodies everywhere, they're mummified because they're frozen and some of the bodies after years are still quite intact because they're frozen. I've opened a body bag of a deceased that's decomposed and had the maggots fall on my gown. But you, you know what you're opening, don't you, generally? Yeah, generally, yeah. And you can smell it before you open it. I can smell it before I open the bag. And I usually smell the green on the tummy before I open the bag and it's only tiny. It's just this, you just get used to an odour that comes in. Yeah. You gotta wonder how you come home from that and then, you know, go to trivia or go out to dinner. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's the part of the brain where you have to, I suppose, put it into a little box and you put it behind. You've got to leave it at work. You know, I do, I do exercise to relieve any of the stress or any of the bad things I've had on that day. You learn to cope and deal with it. I mean, there's some days I could walk out and just cry for hours and hours. It never goes away, but it's in a small place. And I guess you've got the perspective too of you're doing something to help the person, help the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing good for them. That's the main part, and that's what makes me go to work every day because somebody has to take care of your loved ones. Yeah. Glad there's people in the world like you. Not a problem. All right, well, thanks for that, Trace. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Any questions, guys, on that? Anything? Just let me know, and I'll get back to you. Cool. Okay. So if you like this video, hit the like button below, subscribe, yeah. Yeah. and we'll see you next time. See you. Bye. Bye.